All right. right. <laughs> Let's get back to the NBA. Player most likely to make a huge leap and become a household name this season is? Victor Wimbayama. <laughs> Stop it. Chet home, That's Chet home, Chet, Chet Holmgren. Uh, I don't know about that. I think Chet, I think Chet Holmgren because I think I think people might have forgot that he was the number two pick in the draft and he was very close to being number one. When I say a household name, it doesn't mean he's going to be a superstar. But I think after this season, especially because they're going to pair him up, kind of like how LeBron and Carmelo were in the same draft class and D Wade. I think even though he's not in this draft class, they were rookies together. So all of the Wimby hype, Chet is going to benefit from that also because they're both seven foot. One seven foot five, one seven foot unicorns. So I think that that's going to help raise his profile being a part of this this rookie class. Is Wimby a sorry? While you're thinking, Channing, is Wimby a lock for rookie of the year? No, Chet. No. I, Chet, Chet is my Chet, Chet is mine because I think they're going to be in bigger games. They're going to be better better games, more intense. He's got a first team All NBA guy in Shea, and he's got a bunch of other really talented players around him. Whether it's Lou Dort, all of their crew. So now you're adding a guy that's probably a fifteen. 15 point, 17 point a game unicorn to that team. I think that there is a chance that he wins it. Cause look, if the Spurs suck, they're on a two year stretch. They're not trying to make the playoffs this year. They want another top five pick to, to put right I didn't next think to them. Wins mattered when it came to the rookie of the year, necessarily. It does. No, it does. It does. 100%. Yeah, it does. You know, uh, you know who's going to be a household name? Um, Malcolm Brogdon won Rookie of the Year. Malcolm Brogdon won Rookie of the Year because their team went to the postseason. He was a starting rookie. He was a starting. I know it can help you, but I didn't know it could necessarily hinder you that position. Paolo, Paolo, Paolo in Orlando was just not. Yeah, but but he won. But but, injury. But 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 they also they also won thirty eight games. They won thirty eight games last year. They were almost five hundred. Think about it. He's going to be a household name. He will be a household name. But if you were a, if you were, if you, Paolo Bancaro, oh yeah, for sure. Not yet. He's I think Chet, Chet has a better chance than him, and I think Paolo could be an All Star this year. I think Paolo could be an All Star, but just because you're an All Star doesn't mean you're a household name yet. True. Hmm. Let's get on the record with some MVP picks. No, before the season starts. Yes, I'm joking, I'm joking Ali. I'm joking. I'm joking. Ali's like, you don't say oh. no to me. Jokic. I don't think anybody knew pops in the MVP way to go conversation. Out all in there. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. He said Jokic and Victor as the rookie of the year. Yeah. I don't think that, I don't think that anybody, I don't think that anybody really, in my opinion, I don't think anybody knew jumps in the MVP race. I think it's going to be the same six guys. I think it's, it's Embiid. It's Giannis. It's um, J- Joker. I think LeBron will always get votes. And I think, you know, they're like Jason Tatum has a chance because his team's so good. So I think those are the six guys that I feel currently. And I think maybe one other person creeps in that we're not that we're not suspecting because their team Luka? just like plays. I don't think their team's going to be good enough. I don't think so either. No, really? I, I actually had that on here as a question. I don't think Dallas is going to be very good. I, I think they're going to be decent. Are just- the Mavs the team with the most pressure to make the playoffs? Ooh. No. That's how we had that. The most pressure? Mm-mm. No, Pelicans, I would put more pressure. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, because- Sacramento, Why? stop it. I think Sacramento if doesn't have pressure. Back, I don't, to they're make good. the playoffs? They're, but I'm saying pressure to make they're playoffs. Good. I think that, yeah. okay, let's say if they have an okay year and they stay like kind of healthy, I think that they're a fourth or fifth seed at worst. Totally. I'm right, ready. so I don't think that that's pressure. So I'm like, if they get, if they get the – fifth seed and they're playing against the fourth seed in the first round, they can win that. Right. Like I, I think Chicago that Chicago for sure got a lot of pressure. Yeah. I think what the other teams. Doing? Yeah. No one knows Atlanta. What are they doing? There's a couple of Quentin. Now uh, Quentin like Snyder's got a foot. I don't. Let me tell you, I was what thinking about not, this the other okay. day. Yeah. Can I tell you something? About that? Yeah. Is there a player in, in the NBA that is a superstar that isn't at least respectable on defense? Give me somebody. Give me how many, how many players that aren't at least respectable? Because we can say Kyrie, but we know during our championship run, Kyrie was respectable. They were not targeting right. him. They couldn't target him. That wasn't he. What he was respectable on defense. James Harden is not respectable. Okay, continue. Lamelo Ball is pretty bad. He's not a superstar. Okay, he, he's not even uh, an all. He's not even all star. Oh, Zion is not respectable right now. Well, I, again, we he's don't have a large. No, we don't have a large enough. Set. We don't have a large okay, enough sample size. Know. Okay. okay, so <laughs> give me some. No. For defense. Okay, but no, no, but I'm saying uh, though, like Luka, when I say we're like Luka Steph, Steph, kind of boo boo. I was gonna say Luca. So Steph, boo boo on the 
Yes. So Steph is respectable. Steph is respectable oh, on defense. Oh, for sure. Steph, Steph is, is respe- underrated on defense. Very. That's what I'm saying. So it's like when you look at it, when I look at Trey Young, that man is a chair out there on the defensive end. And you don't – you don't cone. have He's a cone. And you don't have – and he's small. He doesn't get a ton of steals like Steph did. Even if you look at how much stronger Steph has gotten from when he first showed up to now, this man has physically worked on his body because he's a high-level professional. So when I look at superstars that are like – zero on the defensive end or are below respectable i think trey young and i think luca right now the difference is luca is still going to get you 10 rebounds a night right because he's so defensive rebounding is a part of defense in my opinion dame dame is good let me know uh, uh, let me say this dame is close dame is close but when you can put up 70s and 60s and like you know what i'm saying you get a pass you get no no not a pass but you're like He's now in a situation. I don't think we're truly going to see if Dame can play any defense till this year because this will be the first year where it's like, Dame, you don't have to go and score 60. You don't have to save yourself on one end of the floor. You need to be respectable on defense. I just think for so many years they were they were targeting other people other than Dame. But, yes, it's hard to be a superstar, and not, and not especially a, a superstar that's trying to win a championship. Don't tell me you're a superstar that wants to win a championship and you play zero defense. Show me a superstar that has won a championship that played zero defense as a top two player on the team. Mm. Oh, that has won a championship. That's different then. That's you know, just named guys that hadn't won a championship. No, but I'm just saying though, they're like, it's hard to win a championship. Yeah. So for me, Trey, when you're talking about Trey, James Hard and Luca has things that he has to address. We all, but again, the difference is, is Trey and Luca are the same age. I would still say that, that Luca is a better defender than Trey. Think about that. I would say that Dame Lillard is a better defender than Trey because of his size. Right, I would, I, I would say James, I, James Harden. I don't know if it's, a, I, don't, I don't know, James Harden. I, it's hard to talk about that defense. You guys <laughs> like to compare a lot, given that question that you just had there. So let's give the bottom, the bottom part of the league a little bit of credit here. Not credit, but conversation. With okay. which new coach does more with less? Um, this coming season, Ime with the Rockets or Monty with the Pistons. Oh, Monty with Chan- the Pistons. Channing, you're a bottom. Go first. I'm a what? <laughs> you're a bottom. Can I please tell you guys oh, that I sent a picture to these fools the other day, and they described this individual, you have no idea who it is, as a lowercase p. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad body. Long back ass. <laughs> uh, listen, the Pistons for sure. I think... Mm, I like, I honestly, I'm going to go with the Rockets. I'm going to go with you the Rockets. You are dying on that. You are all about them Rockets. Okay. Okay. Really quickly. Cade Cunningham, stud in Detroit. Uh, Ivy, they have some good talent over there. Do, would Van Fleet be the best player on their team? No. Who would be the best player on that on that team? Cade Cunningham. He's talking about no. He's lying. He's trying. He's trying. He came to lie. I was waiting for him to finish. So basically, what I'm saying is that off the drop, you have the best player, and then you have a ton of young talent. You have a ton of young talent, and you have a veteran guy that's won a championship. Detroit is starting with far less. So if I'm going to say from orchestrating how what they're doing in their roster, I would say that that has a much more mature roster that's easier for a coach. And when you have a guy like 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 Fred that that has been through the fires, he can help direct the young boys in that squad this is where we need to be this is where we need to do there's no one on detroit's lineup like that there's no one's on detroit line not yet because they don't have veterans and so that's where to me i think houston's going to get more out of less because they have veterans veterans get more out of less i think you're you're also not taking into consideration detroit is top to bottom a bigger team in the eastern conference not a tiny team van vliet is tiny uh uh, green is tiny. Uh, sanguine is tiny. Like a lot of those guys are not, not tiny. I mean, not mean tiny. They're not the tallest guys. They're athletic. They are fast. They are not the biggest guys in the league. And you're in the Western conference. I can name off right now, 11 teams that are better than them where Detroit is going to have to battle against the Eastern conference where there are some teams that are really trying to not win next year. So you're taking the Pistons. He's taking the Rockets. Correct. Okay. Mark that down. Um, what will be the league's highest scoring team? You want to know the last three years? Yes. The Kings last year. Kings last year at one. 
Damn. 121. Golden State the year before at 19, 119. And then Atlanta the year before that at 118. The Suns? I see the Suns too. For sure. I would say I would say the Suns are going to be the highest scoring team because the pace in which they're going to have to play at to get these guys the ball is going to be next level. Somebody made a point. Bradley Where are Beal, they going to be? Years ago, averaged, who led the league in scoring, is going to have your third best defender on him. Somebody's going to get barbecue chicken. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where are they going to be in the league defensively? Oh, but. Don't don't discredit Frank Vogel. I'm not 15 to 20. It'll 15 be to 20. The bottom half of the league. So this is so so and that'll know. win you a championship. So no, I'm not saying they're going to win a championship. I'm just asking. I think they'll be top to, if they as long as they get somewhere between 13 and 10, they'll be fine. They can't. They don't want to be in that 17, 18 range because then you're depending too much on your offense, and you got to win games on the defensive end. So you got to be able to do that with your defense over the course of the season and into the postseason. So my thing is, you're not going to have a top five defense. At least I don't think they will. So if they're somewhere between that 10, 11, 12 range, that should be their goal because their offense, ideally, if done well, will be in the top five, top three. That's a good balance, right? Like, to me, that's a good balance because that means they are going to win some things. And look, their offense can be their best defense. We all know one is Bradley Beal, two is Devin Booker, three is Kevin Durant. At small forward, they have Josh Okage. All good. Okoge. Okoge, my bad. Joe uh, Nurkic is their center, and then after that is Drew Eubanks. Then after that is Bobo. Ball. None of them are defenders. After Kevin Durant, you have Watanabe, solid player, not really a defender. After that, you have Nazir Little, who's an energy guy, solid defender. But are you going to go through their own roster? Doug, I'm telling you. I'm just asking. Yes. Okay. Then behind Grace, uh, Devin Booker, you have Grayson Allen and Eric Gordon. <laughs> They're not those really are no, 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 but I'm it, you, yes. Grayson is solid. So I agree. I, I I I like how they've rounded off their lot, but they do. They need a better big, they in my don't opinion. Have, Doug, they have one, two, three, four. They really have four guys who are above six ten. That's it. And one of those is Kevin Durant. They have seven one, six ten, seven two. Well, how many threes are they going to knock down? A shitload. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just think it's going to be hard for them. They're going to want to switch everything, and then Nurk is going to, they're going to have to play small. And then Bo, you're relying on Bobo. If Nurk gets hurt, Bobo's your center for the season. He's not even he doesn't play like a center. He plays like a guard. If hmm. they can go get a real like center, I think their defense will be great. But they don't have a real shot blocking center who's agile. Next question. Um, before we open up the regular season, which is on Tuesday, we probably will not record another episode before that. So having said that, take a drink. Is there anything left on your mind when it comes to this NBA regular season that needs to be addressed before it actually tips off? Which Um, team blows up first? (laughs) That one. Which team what? That uh, that one, uh, the which team blows up. I would say the Pelicans and Zion Williams. So not that they're going to blow up. I'm saying oh, that yeah, yeah. that is the team that I want to pay attention to because I like. I'm sorry. We will sit up here and Al, we've done this podcast for I don't know how many years. We are the number one support. We're the number one supporters of players. We root for players. We're sarcastic and we're dicks. But at the end of the day, Zion Williamson missed most of his one year in college. He missed his entire first season. He has played half a season, half a season. And this is now year five for him. So we're going on six years where he's missed more games than he has played. I'm sorry. At some point in time, you have to move on. You have to move on. I'm not talking about like just trading him, but it's like if this, if you can't build around him, because that's the goal. And the goal is to figure out, can you build around John Moran? Can you build around Anthony Davis? Can you build around Embiid? And the answer is no. Not does he not have the talent. It's like, is he going to be on the court to build around him? And the answer so far has been no. So if we're going to get into year after this year, we'll be starting year set or year six. But if we're going back, we're really talking about year seven because in Duke, he missed all of that time. So we're talking about 
five years as a four years as a pro played and a year of college. That's five total years where he has not been available to play basketball. Nice Let me ask you this though, because I thought you were actually going to take a different, and I understand that the cameras were there and I know what happened when I used to walk into practice and y'all had NBA E there. Y'all played like you were in game seven of the NBA finals at a practice and training camp. I get yes, it. Yeah. Having said that, the clips of Zion that I saw the other day come out, he was mic'd up. He looks good body, the physique, you're watching him right now. And is there, I thought you were going to show a little bit of support and kind of love of just like good to see him back out there. Maybe had some expectations for him, but you are so far removed. Past. No, no, I'm, I, I'm rooting for him. This is the thing I can root yeah. for him and still hold him accountable. Like what the fuck dog? Okay. Like what That's I what can still root for you, but it's like, you can't show up looking like Tupac. And then at the end of the season, look like Biggie. <laughs> like you don't work that way. It don't work that way. Right? It don't work that way. Back. Yeah, yeah. But that's because he hasn't move? been on the floor. That's why he looks that way. <laughs> and then every time there's an injury, anytime there's an injury, he, you can see him visibly gain 20 pounds every single mm -hmm. time. That's not good for now. You've got to get back into shape. And you got to drop 20 pounds. That's more pounding on your knees, more pounding on your ankle. Cause you're carrying around 320 pounds versus 285. That adds up. Every step you take is an extra 15 pounds on your ligaments, on your joints, on your tendons, on everything. So if he's consistently fluctuating in weight at that size, I can't build around this dude. If you can't build around him, then what are we doing here? Wasting other I players time. This is neither here nor there, but did you know Bobo is only 23 years old? Look at this little Holy creep. Holy shit. Look at this little creep. What are you doing? Come in here and say hello to the people. Get it. <laughs> Who is this? I'm to interrupt you. I can't see shit, Richard. Richard, we can't see. You got to move your stuff. This oh, what's is up? Like, uh... This is what I was trying to do. Just... I'm going to be really honest with you guys right now as you're recording this podcast. Okay, go show her what you do. I was crawling across the floor to... Get the snack. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? I, thought you were... I haven't eaten all day, and I just wanted to get a snack in peace without Richard. And I was like, what the hell? And I was like, I thought she was doing it to mess with me. Malika, never, yeah, never, never, allow, never allow Richard to make you feel like you cannot just be wherever you would like to be. Yeah, no, but she what? knew I was going to do this to her. I was going to do this to her. I, I was literally like crawling. <laughs> That's insane. That's it. What kind of budget cuts y'all got? All y'all got is pop chips. In there. That's what I said. This is these pop chips. This pop chips. Disgusting. No, there's there, you got to dig deep. You got to no, look, look, look. And like Turner, we got a whole room of candy. No, no, no. Look, look. The good stuff is down low. You got to get the good okay. stuff. The crispy Ooh. treats. Hey, I'm not going on TV dots. with you if you're eating funyuns. I'm not going on TV with you. If your breath smells like that. No. I actually had, I actually tweeted about this. Where do you rank Funyuns on your chip? Bottom three. Bottom three. Is it even on your chipboard? Bottom three. Oh, oh my God. God. I love Funyuns. You look There's, like a funny and eat motherfucker. Fuck you. There's an everyday <laughs> chip. There's an I everyday. Snacks and peas. Yeah, there's an everyday chip and there's a, there's a special chip. There's a special chip. This falls under the line of special chip. Like you don't get it often, but when you do, boy. No, I, I don't see it. No, I don't see it. it Onions are delicious. It's literally like it's literally like garlic flavored styrofoam. Yes. Um, okay, so. we are going to wrap this up. I had one, but I guess I won't do it. Bye, woman. Nope. All right. There we go. I'll do it. Now I'll do it. That's another edition of Road Tripping. We're done. <laughs>